Now we are going to study um, some more a tropical flower, Cattleya. Cattleya is a, a kind of a tropical orchid. Um, it's different from the Chinese orchid that we studied earlier. Uh, and it's also different from those uh, uh, Pelinopsis, I think. These are the Pelinopsis. Uh, we're going to study still later. We just have a <coughs> new bloom coming out from this old plant. And this one, we, we had a newcomer uh, last weekend. And you can, um, so we, when, we, when we plant something um, in real life, we don't rush into it. So you look around the flower or the object you're going to, to plant and try to understand everything uh, first. So the characteristic of this flower is the long uh, protruded this uh, tube kind of uh, center and with the uh, two skirt um, kind of edged, uh, skirt edged um, side petals. We did this one earlier last time with the outline. It was uh, kind of yellow um, when this comes and now turns a very subtle purple, a lavender color. And still it got yellow in the, in the center of that. And you can see three um, back petals. This uh, should be the top one actually. It turned upward. Um, that's a uh, um, unusual, but uh, it's nice, I think. So one up and one down. This is a more in a normal position. So I'm going to do this uh, this top one, this second one. Bear with me if I make you dizzy. You can see on my uh, right side of the the uh, easel, the last uh, the painting I did last time, and you can take a look of that video if you will. Today I'm going to basically try to uh, do it in a plein air condition, you know, assume I paint outdoors, so what do I use? Um, someone asked me what to bring uh, when you go travel. I usually carry this little case with everything I need. Um, a ink, convenient ink cake. So I got ink there. I can even put a little bit of color uh, Sometimes a little blue, sometimes a little rouge, depends on the uh, expected painting I, I'm going to do. And the little con uh, water container, you can spray water on the ink cake to, to get the ink easier. And uh, you can also apply water if needed on the paper, like a you know, watercolor painting would always do. And uh, I use this piston brush, piston water brush. I uh, loaded the reservoir with the water. This, this is what I would do. You can either insert, uh, you know, get water from this little container or anything with water, bottle or something. The easiest I find is to put under the uh, sink, you know, the tap water with, with the raining water from up, you point the brush right under the tap water, and, you know, the raining water, you just uh, turn the uh, piston knob, so it would suck in very easily because of the gravity. Um, and uh, let me start with uh, ink drawing. Let me 
see. I have two sizes to, to use the the number uh, A10 or the A20. I will use A20 because it's uh, more flexible. I can get uh, more um, curvy line, you know, cursive lines. So I just use a little light ink. And you can use the. Uh, I just use this palette in hand, but you can use the the area that uh, on the side of the ink cake to kind of uh, um, blend it a little bit to get a light tone. Or I can just use the palette. Um, it, you cannot really see my palette. This is my uh, travel palette. It has water in the in these two uh, containers, but you don't have to carry it. I find them very uh, useless when I work outside. Uh, but anyway, I got water here just in case. So <coughs> I I put the cup um, on the end to extend my uh, grid. So you you uh, grid. You can use uh, just like that, like a wrist brush. You can also have a long handle like that. Um, so I will draw the flower first with the light ink outline, and you can dry the paper. I think a, a water. I mean a paper towel is a must. Let me get a tissue or something. So uh, yeah, carry some uh, tissue will help on um, paper towel. You you dry the bottom of the brush, even though you, um, the water will come out. But you try to get a dry brush to start with. Um, I would I'll make the flower the the golden rope position. You know the the quarters or the thirds, just like you take a picture. The focus of the Object it would be so I keep looking at the the flower when I draw so I don't really look at my hand um, make it make it very clear the the uh, front and the back relationship <laughs> concentrate on the outer shape we call it envelope. And then the inner, inner divisions of uh, the object. I kind of exaggerate the, the tube shape here. Um, and then the, the outer petals. You have to, you can look, you know, you can change your, your viewpoint, just find the the best uh, angle. This this nice uh, characteristic of uh, the cutlia is the, the skirt kind of edge on the side of the flower petals. In the front. Again, um, I try to remind myself work on the big shape. Don't get lost in the little nuance. I mean the details. You can do that um, it's after the envelope is is uh, um, shaped. I try to make only one flower. Uh, so you, you need to understand which petal is which, because there are two flowers. Um, so I I see another another white petal is it belongs to the the other one. So I I just omit that, and it should be something. So three uh, pointed back petals. Okay, and then the stem of the flower goes like that. 
from a pocket, a pocket like a, like iris, you know, it has this kind of pocket, if you recall. And I try to vary my my brush work. Uh, just use drier brush, maybe a little darker. And it has it's a different color also. You know, it has kind of a rust rusty color in it. So I just use some dark accent like that. I don't have to worry about the, the little pair of bands, but you could do that later. <clears throat> the the next is the very juicy leaf, slippery, a uh, shiny leaf, smooth leaf. So I, I use a different uh, different uh, stroke. This uh, stem is quite uh, rough, so I should use drier brush still. Uh, pay attention to the angle. Uh, it should be not the same line straight down. It should be a little curvy like that. And you can have lost and found lines. <laughs> no completion. Be suggestive. And here's a little uh, joint, narrow, narrows down, and then goes the stem for the leaf. Try to do it one in one stroke. That's the challenge of a, of a Chinese brush painting. You have to do it calligraphically. Answer phone calls. That's actually the back side. Um, there's a little bit front side. Outline is a good way to study a, a real uh, plant or flower. And then you can do spontaneous spontaneous painting easily. If you understand the structure, the botanic characteristics of the flower. You have to consider composition, so I try to find the best angle to place this leaf it's a little bit too tall there anyway. It's a flat kind of leaf. 
Wait, where? I think this one I try to be too realistic. I need to uh, add another one to make it more interesting. Okay, I have to consider if I need a second flower. Maybe we, we don't um, just put a, a bud or something. I just added the second one, but you really don't see much as there. Okay, now um, a fun time to color it. Uh, let me start from the leaves with my wrist brush. It's a very large brush with short handle. It's easy to carry outside, you know, just in a, in a uh, pencil case or brush, toothbrush case, something like that. So I will use some uh, uh, color here. Let's see, sap green. It's easier to get green in watercolor. That's why I I, I use. Uh, Holbein uh, is the brand watercolor. It's uh, my green, but it's a kind of dark, so I will add some uh, red to darken it. So you add a complement color to red is a, a, a yellow and red and a blue. So the red is complement right, on the color wheel. So. Add some, uh, some red here. Make it uh, brown, warmer. And now I just add some darker green by adding ultramarine and uh, rose matter and some uh, sap green again. Just don't have to blend too much. In the, uh, let me do this dark one, just test the nice. See I I have multiple load. So I can I can get all the tones in one stroke. I I just made a correction of that. So make the stem 
different uh, height to uh, give that the proper. Okay, this one here I need to. I see there's a reflection light there. Try to get that feel. Last time I did uh, some uh, outline with uh, um, amber, if you recall. That is for the glow of uh, sunshine in the morning. So today we have a drizzle day, very um, cloudy day, so I don't have that warm sunshine on the leaf. So I don't have to use the warm color. But it is, it's a nice approach to create uh, some uh, depths. You can just add brown to the green to make it the green more real kind of not flat you know. let me I see the dark side is on the top of the leaves and the lighter on the other side so you can make a distinction or well, the paper I'm using is uh, the water start uh, rice paper roll it comes rolled uh, you cut it into a piece before you paint. This leaf, I, uh, in life, real life, I see the back side and this one also. But I consider if I need to make it darker to, to uh, contrast with the flower. So maybe I just do that. Okay, my color is getting lighter, so I can do these tender leaves without uh, uh, changing the color in the palette. Just do what is proper at the moment on the brush. It will give you a natural uh, change of uh, colors. Some a little bit yellow to do the back. I see a warm reflection of the, the flower on the back side. So I just use a little warm color on the uh, shady side. And you can just outline, I mean, highlight the line uh, with, a, with a little yellow ochre or amber, raw amber. That's about it. Uh, it's okay to have some color blur um, outside the line. That's, 
that's okay. It's not gonna be our elaborated style, but uh, um, semi gonna be. So I would draw the stem of the flower with with a green, light green, maybe more yellow, tender green. And uh, clean the brush to do the the color of the petals. It's very subtle, so I need to be careful to uh, avoid staining the color. It's good to use a clean brush. Let me uh, let me see. Just clean the brush, maybe with a tissue, and then. Use water, dilute it. I assume I, I'm outside, I don't have much water to clean the brush. So I dry the brush with a tissue and then uh, clean water. So a little bit remaining green is good. Um, let me just do the yellow wash inside the little tube. Should have little bigger areas for the purple, and also some green tones near the center, and some uh, petals behind is green. It has a purple, very light purple, but I uh, I have to stay with the the. What they call that primary color of white, so I don't have to worry about impressionistic um, colors. Well, let me just add a little bit of lavender. See what happens. Let's do this one a little bit. Is it on the back side? On the back. You know, in real life, it, the color is more intense. We try not to compete with that. We go the opposite. We just make it more subtle, um, and uh, let the people's imagination grow and fly to keep to uh, fill in the expectation. So I just add a little dark instead of. Compete with the natural color hit there. I just use a fewer color, more more subtle, instead of uh, stronger colors. You might get you know better real color in in oil, but uh, in watercolor it's already very <coughs> um, difficult to match the the real thing. Just uh, it's already too much when I talk, so just be very conserved with your your colors, and uh, you can add a little more, maybe on the on the uh, back side of the paper to make it more subtle. I turn the paper over to work on the back side of the flowers. And you can use a little uh, I think uh, you may not see the the little lavender color. It's just a hint of a lavender dry brush. Then I clean the brush again and then use the white right out of the tube. I put it there. It's a uh, titanium. Opaque white in color. 
The Chinese white may be not opaque enough. So I use titanium in watercolor. You can see I I the reason I do it on the back is I don't have to worry about covering the uh, lines on the front. If I do it on the front, I have to worry about this opaque color cover the you know the lines. But since it's on the back, don't worry. You can see I covered the line, but it will not really, even though the purple color you know, will not be covered, just to kind of, um, what do we call this? You can, it's, it's like you add a white paper on the back of, a, of the uh, painting, you'll see the color shows better. When I turn it over, you'll see that. So you can also shade the surrounding area, like the sky, you know, to or the background to make the white stand out even more. But uh, I just try to keep it uh, simple. You can, you can also paint directly on, on the, in the front uh, with white. One. So there are many ways of applying white. Uh, later on, I will show you how to uh, <coughs> paint a Tarashikomi on semi-sized or sized shoan. You can drop in white into the dark, but not on the unsized paper because this is a absorbent paper. You cannot use Tarashikomi or dripping color technique. Okay. That's uh, about it. Uh, let me see if I need to sign it and uh, uh, stamp it. You don't have to always write the name of the plant. Uh, you can just uh, sign uh, like uh, on the corner with a date. Or if, it, if I write something there, it would be nice. It's a poetry, uh, a, a line from a poem. I have to find out uh, what's the best for this painting. But uh, for now, I would like to thank you for watching. And until next time. Happy painting. Bye-bye.